You're watching local coverage you can count on. This is Wayne 15 News, Nightcast at 11. And good evening, I'm Dirk Rowley. Tara has the night off. We have severe weather in our area, so right away we want to go over to Nicholas, who is tracking the storms. Nicholas? Oh, thanks, Dirk. Yeah, the strongest storm activity right now in areas to the northwest of Fort Wayne. In fact, some spots in northwestern Indiana have picked up already a couple inches of rainfall. Some areas seeing down trees and power lines with the gusty winds coming with the storms. This is Storm Tracker now. We're dry from Fort Wayne down to the south, but it is these areas to the northwest of the Summit City where we have an active thunderstorm warning. Portions of Kosciuszko, LaGrange, and Noble Counties. We're looking at that area from Bremen to Kendallville along. 6 there. You can see the thunderstorm highlighted in that orange and red color. The strongest part of this, the most uh, dangerous part of the storm with all the lightning, the heavy rain that could cause flooding, and the gusty wind potential of up to 60 miles per hour. This storm is moving to the southeast at a speed of about 45 miles per hour. So as we put a track on it and take it into Kendallville, we see it arriving there by 1131. That severe thunderstorm warning in effect until 1130 tonight. So the biggest threats, flooding. Heavy rain, also some strong winds. We're also monitoring the chance at some hail and a low end chance of a tornado, but those are our lowest threats of the night. Our temperatures sit in the 60s, and they're going to be fairly steady here through the overnight. You can see on Futurecast, we'll have this round of rain continuing for the next few hours as it makes its way across the region. By just before uh, sunup, we will still have some rain around. This, of course, a concern for us with Fort for Fitness and all the morning races. The marathon starts at 6.30. Could there be a scattered thunderstorm? It is possible. The good news is the chance is decreasing. And the farther along we move through the morning, well, the chance just keeps decreasing. Temperatures at sunup in the mid-60s slowly rising. By 10 o'clock, when we're getting that four-mile race underway, just a low-end chance at a stray sprinkle or two. 81 tomorrow's high temperature on Sunday, 80. Monday and Tuesday, the high heat still in the cards. A high temperature of 89 both days. We do cool down as the week goes on. You can see temperatures dipping into the 60s by week's end. That's your forecast. We have news and, of course, lots of sports for you after the break. Local coverage you can count on continues with Tara Brantley and Dirk Rowley. You're watching Wayne 15 News, Nightcast at 11. The Fort Wayne man who pleaded guilty in the death of his girlfriend's toddler has now learned his punishment. This morning, Shane Patton was sentenced to 14 years in prison. January last year, baby Jocelyn was found unresponsive in the 200 block of Butler Street. An autopsy revealed she was choked and smothered. Patton was arrested later uh, last October after evading police for six months. Then in July, after his release, he entered a guilty plea. His bond was revoked and a warrant was issued for his arrest. Patton would later claim he was forced by a public defender to sign the plea deal. A Fort Wayne man found guilty in the April killing of a Chicago man has been sentenced. 28-year-old Antoine Kelly Jr. will spend 60 years in prison for the shooting death of 23-year-old Darius McMorris. The shooting happened on April 1st in the 5400 block of South Harrison Street, just south of downtown Fort Wayne. Authorities arrested Kelly in Tennessee days later following an investigation. The Allen County Coroner says that man er, who was hit by an SUV on I-69, that man has died. Authorities say 36-year-old Marcus Clockton was hit in the northbound lane just before 3 Wednesday afternoon near the Coldwater Road exit. Investigators say Clockton was chasing a ball across the interstate when he was hit. Police and prosecutors still investigating the crash. His death is the 29th fatal motor vehicle crash in Allen County uh, this year. Like that 29th death. Steuben County authorities are investigating a bomb at a Fremont restaurant earlier today. A report from the Sheriff's Department says that the threat was made around 1.30 p.m. at the McDonald's on 6800 North Old U.S. 27. Deputies arrived on the scene and the business was evacuated to secure the area. Using a bomb-sniffing dog, authorities found no indications of explosives inside or in the parking lot. No one was hurt during the incident. The Steuben County Sheriff's Office continues to investigate. The man police believe committed a series of rapes learned his fate today. Marquise Dozier is sentenced to 55 years in prison by the Allen County Superior Court. Dozier previously pleaded guilty to three counts of felony rape. Police say a series of rapes happened during the overnight hours, all within a mile of each other. Using DNA, police were able to link them and then created a suspect profile. Police arrested Dozier in March using fingerprint evidence. We have more breaking weather, and we want to go back to Nicholas right now, who is tracking again severe storms. Yeah, here's the latest, Dirk. A new severe thunderstorm warning issued for a portion of the area. This one for LaGrange over to Angola. 
thunderstorms just moving in there. You're seeing rain falling, but the intensity is going to really pick up between now and 1145 when this new warning expires. I'm keeping an eye on things. Of course, should new warnings be issued, I'll break in and let you know. Right now, we're getting ready for the highlight zone. start, but the Fort for Fitness Fall Festival is officially underway. Packet pickup started this afternoon and was scheduled to be followed by the kids and seniors final mile race. That unfortunately was not held tonight due to all the lightning earlier. According to the group's Facebook page, they will make an announcement via social media next week as far as rescheduling. Tomorrow's schedule is still up and still on their original start times. We'll have coverage starting at 7 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, you can find that also on Wayne.com. Tune in for exclusive interviews from along the course, the start and the finish lines as well. We will have uh, more sports action, uh, of course, on Wayne.com with an uh, inside look at how they're keeping track of what's going on along the course. Ruben Solis shows you some exclusive looks about how neighbors help runners along the route. Find that exclusively on Wayne.com. Glenn's up next with the Highlight Zone. Keep it right here. Ray's not going to keep us away tonight. This is the game of the week. Highlight Zone starts next. Yeah! 